Well, welcome to Thursday, I believe it is. Let's see if I'm right. Wednesday. I don't know. I lost a day there somewhere, didn't I? So we are into Wednesday, and it's good to have you here. I think I said Thursday on my other post this morning, too. So anyway, some days it gets, some weeks it gets going so fast, it's hard to keep track of it. And um, we um, we uh, just have to slow down. So we're glad to have you here. And once again, I go on about. Welcome to Thursday, I believe it is. Let's see if I'm right. Wednesday. I don't know. I lost a day there somewhere, didn't I? So we are into Wednesday, and it's good to have you here. I think I said Thursday on my other post this morning, too. So anyway, some days it gets, some weeks it gets going so fast, it's hard to keep track of it. And um, we... Um, we uh, just have to slow down. So we're glad to have you here. And once again, I go on about chapter three in the book of Romans all the time for several reasons. And, uh, you know, we'll get into that this morning. So Biff, good to see you this morning. I'm uh, out here at the old ball field getting ready to uh, hang out with some uh, ninth graders in English today. Yesterday I had kindergarten and it was quite a interesting day. So uh, Tony, I know I got in a couple auction items of yours, or uh, so I will get those out in the next couple of days. I had a ball game last night that was like an hour and a half from the house. Um, so, you know, we got to fit the family stuff in there with business every now and then, right? So we got that done, uh, and we will be, uh, we got to hopefully get some things out today after, say, 5 o'clock at Ona. And then uh, probably try again for Friday and then all day Saturday, we will try to get you if you've got something coming. So we're going to get it out there and we appreciate it so much. So good morning, Maureen. Good morning, Shirley. Uh, we're glad to have you guys here. It's always good to be able to have uh, a moment, get together before we get out of here and meet this crazy world today. Uh, because there's a lot going on. And uh, as I've told you guys many times, Grandma Lunsford raised us grandkids uh, on Romans chapter 3. And the two big verses are uh, Romans 3.10 and 3.23. And one is, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the other is, there's none good, no, not one. So if you got to run today and you don't have time to tune in, Romans chapter 3 verse 10 and verse 23 there. Those are the ones grandma wore us kids out on uh, when we were growing up. And, uh, you know, it didn't take for many years, right? But what's the point? You know, the point is we're all sinners. We've all been born with the sin nature because sin entered into the world through Adam and Eve. And because of that, you and I are going to have to make a decision here in this world. And hopefully, before we take our last breath in this world, we make that decision and we decide that we want to be with Jesus. And that's all there is. You know, everybody's chasing after everything in the world from a career to a job or a, a, a spouse or the kids or the little league or whatever you're chasing after. But at the end of the day, there's only one thing going to matter. And when you leave this place, okay, it's am I saved or am I not saved? And there won't be second chances or not going to be another opportunity to, for you to figure it out uh, in, in the whole scheme of things. Um, all that's going to matter is, does Jesus know me by name? And uh, and that's all that's going to matter. So all have sinned to come short of the glory of God, and there's none good, no, not one. Those are two verses that if, if you don't have a lot of time or you can't stay with us all morning, I would beg you to please circle those in your Bible uh, underline them, whatever you do, highlight them, uh, because until you realize that we've all sinned and you're a sinner and that there's none of us that are any good, you're, you're in deep, for, deep trouble. So, um, you know, a lot of people going through life thinking, well, I'm as good as anybody. Yeah, you might be just as good as anybody in hell, right? But the thing is, you can be just as good as anybody in heaven if Jesus covers your sins. If Jesus doesn't cover your sins and you're not interested in Jesus, he has no choice but to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And the problem with that is Jesus didn't prepare hell for you. So there, there's there's a lot to be said right in there as well. So let me read a few verses and we'll jump right into this. Um, it says, what advantage then 
hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Now, you know, uh, I don't want to get into that too much today, but this is what made the Jewish people different. This circumcision thing was a dangerous surgery 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago. It's dangerous today. And it was definitely dangerous for grown men to be doing that. And that was a stumbling block that some of the early converts tried to talk or, or tried to say was necessary for Christians. So once again, you know, the vision came from the angel of the Lord that said, you know, don't be adding a bunch of stuff to getting saved. And you and I today are really bad about adding some things to getting saved. What I got to do today is realize that I'm a sinner and I got to realize that Jesus is the only one that can forgive me of my sins. And he's the one I have to ask because he paid to sin that. So then once I surrender, God starts to work on my life. See, if I could get myself straightened up, then I wouldn't need Jesus, right? Oh, I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to get my life lined out. Then I'm going to get saved. Well, guess what? The problem with that is I can't straighten myself out and I can't forgive my sins, right? So let's go a little further. It says, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? And this is Paul writing this in Romans chapter 3, verse Three And now verse 4, he says, God forbid, ye let God be true, but every man be a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. <clears throat> now, how am I going to overcome death and condemnation to everlasting damnation? Is I'm going to accept what Jesus has done for me. Okay, so <clears throat> it goes on, it says, look. If our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? So once again, what's Paul setting up here? <clears throat> Paul really knew the Old Testament laws, right? Uh, he was a Roman citizen, but at the same time, he was a Pharisee. So he had all this knowledge. He grew up, uh, if you remember Gamaliel there in, in the book of Acts, uh, Paul sat under him and he was one that said look if this is of god we can't stop it if it's of man it'll die out in a week let this go don't persecute these men which kind of leads me to believe that maybe gamaliel was starting to see see what was up right so <clears throat> paul's laying this case out and paul's trying to get it across to him that look the vengeance is coming and it's coming for those that aren't saved and if you're not paying attention here you're going to miss this and he says, For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, uh, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? <clears throat> so again, what's he trying to get across? <clears throat> I'm sorry. I got a frog in my throat there. It, what, what it is, is God, may, God forbid is to say, may it never be or perish the thought, Okay. So this is a direct denial is a form of negativism or a negation, I'm sorry, in which the individual recoils with horror or the thought of something, right? So let God be true refers to God keeping his promises to Israel. So what's going on? The people are saying, well, God's left the Israel people. God is not interested in Israel, but there's nothing could be further from the truth then nor today. See, God still has a chosen people. Now, you and I, <clears throat> as Gentiles, we got grafted into this thing. We get grafted in because the Jewish people rejected Jesus, and that opened the door for Paul and a lot of these disciples to go to the rest of the world, and now we've got this chance to be saved. How wonderful it is to be saved this morning, right? So good morning, David, Pam, Butch, Benita. Good to see everybody today. <clears throat> so, Let's go just a little further. Now we get into the Romans 3.10 and Romans 3.23 that Grandma preached to us forever, okay? Um, <laughs> kindergarten is a breeze. Oh, it sounds good anyway, doesn't it, Myrtle? So, what then? Are we better than they? No, <clears throat> in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. So here's the deal, Paul's saying, after he lays out the case, he says, we're all under this sin nature. 
See, if you'll go back and look at Genesis chapter 3, we, we, we introduce sin in, into the world right then because Eve is beguiled by the devil or tricked by the devil, and Eve realizes she's guilty, so she takes the apple or the fruit or whatever it really was, and she takes it to Adam and says, Hey, man, try this. This is good stuff. And I don't know how much of a fight Adam put up. Some scholars say Adam did it so she wouldn't be guilty of, of by herself. And he didn't want her to suffer the judgment that was to come from God. Because remember what Eve told the devil. Uh, if we eat of that tree, God said, you will surely die. And the devil said, oh, you're not going to die. <clears throat> so once again, was it half truth? Well, it was half truth because she didn't physically die. But she died in that she became separated from God from that situation. So again, pretty scary stuff. Okay. So <clears throat> here we go. <coughs> I'm so sorry. So he, he quotes this out and he starts it here in Romans 3.10, which is Psalm 14.1 uh, through 3. And then uh, also uh, Psalm 53.1 through 3. And then in Ecclesiastes 7.20. So let's look at this because we're into Psalms. We're into Proverbs. Um, he quotes Psalm 36, uh, Job 5:16 here in verse 19. So there's a lot of Old Testament scripture. Why does he do this? He's showing, look, we're not forgetting about the Old Testament. We're not forgetting about the things of God. But here it is. He says, as it is written, there is none good, no, not one. Now, this is Romans 3, verse 10. This is what Grandma wore us grandkids out on as it is written paul says i'm not coming up with this this is not new stuff okay <clears throat> as it is written <clears throat> as it is written there is none righteous no not one there is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after god so once again what what's the cool thing about meeting with jesus here at seven o'clock in the morning for us to have a bible study Listen, we are seeking after Jesus. Paul's saying, look here, there's none that seeketh after. There's none that seeketh after God. Man, I'm so glad that we got past all that and we are seeking after God today. Verse 12, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Man, that's, that's heartbreaking if you stop and think about it. There's nobody doing any good for God. See, I can't do good for God until I get saved. You're the same way. I don't care how good of a person you are or how many great works you're doing. You're doing it all for nothing if you don't have Jesus in your life. You might be the greatest Rotary president or Chamber of Commerce president they've ever had. You may be a mayor of a small town that does amazing works. But at the end of this day, if you are not saved and you don't believe in Jesus Christ, all these things mean nothing because you're not seeking after God and you're an unprofitable soul that is going to depart from here and open up your eyes and be in torment. Man, it's hard to say, isn't it? But we don't want you to go through that. We don't want you to, to, to perish. No Christian wants anybody to die and go to hell. See, so we don't want that. So their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongue they have used deceit. Their poison of asp is under their lips. So once again, <clears throat> Paul quotes all this scripture from verse 10 through verse 18 to show the universal guilt. Okay? Paul also is saying, look, I'm not your judge. I'm telling you that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay? So the purpose of the law was to bring conviction and to prove your guilt. Thou shalt not kill. Man, if you've killed, that ought to bother you. Whether it's an accident or where you meant to do it, killing somebody should hurt you. Lying to somebody should hurt you. Stealing from somebody should hurt you. Coveting something somebody else has should hurt us. Those are just a few of the Ten Commandments, and I didn't even get into the fact of having some other God before the God our God, the one we have to worship. Because without faith in God, it's impossible to please God. So again, there's so much going on here, right? So the faith <clears throat> is the only valid object in which man must place his faith. See, we've got to place our faith in Jesus Christ. 
So the mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are, sh are, are swift to shed blood. So what's Paul doing? He's going through the history of the world and he's saying, look, their throat is an open sepulcher, their tongue, they have used deceit. There's lying, there's cheating, there's stealing, there's everything in the world going on. It's going on with the, the, the Jewish folks as well as the whole world. See, we're all in this corruption thing because we're born with the sin nature. We look at people that are highly successful and we want to be like them and we may even grow to the point we worship them when if we really knew them, those people are the worst sinners you've ever met and are headed straight to hell and this is all they're ever going to get in this world, but yet we're still, we're still worshiping them. We're really bad about that in politics. We're really bad about that in show business. We're really bad about that as far as any kind of popularity goes. Even your preacher, if you pray, it's great to support your preacher. <clears throat> but if you have made your preacher more than just God's messenger, you got a problem. If your Sunday school teacher has become more to you than just, you know, the man that God sent to tell you about Jesus, you better be careful. Because there's a lot of preachers that are, that are preying on a lot of people in this world today for support financially, for support in other ways, for all kinds of things that they're justifying in their mind. And you really got to be careful. Because that's how the devil's infiltrating this thing. He's not killing Christians like he used to. There's places in the world you could get yourself killed. But here's what the devil has decided to do now. He is going to go out here and put his own people in the church house. And they're going to fight over the collar of the carpet. And they're going to fight over the building additions. And they're going to fight over everything. Because that's how the devil works. That's the dissension. That's how he sows stuff. And why? Because their throat is an open sepulcher. Their tongue uses deceit. The poisons of asps is under their lips. They're killing people. We kill so many more people with our mouth than we ever did with a gun or a sword. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. See, there's so many people that are bitter toward the world but would tell you they love Jesus. And I'm not saying bitter toward the world and the sins of the world. I'm saying there's people that are mad at God. They're mad at the world. They're mad about their life. They're mad at everything that could possibly they could be mad at. And here's the problem with that. Why are you mad at all this stuff? It's all temporary. Doesn't matter how big your problem is today. If you know you're going to live forever, what's the problem here? But you see, there's so many Christians that, that really, they, they don't think about heaven. They don't want to be in heaven. They don't want to be in a place where the day's never going to end. There's no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain. They love this world. They love the things that are going on in this world. They want to be a part of it. And if the world, you know, if you love the world, the love of God's not in you. That's First John right over there. We probably ought to swing through there here for long and, and reinforce some of that stuff. So the destruction and misery are in their ways. You think we don't have a lot of destruction and misery? Now we're sheltered a little bit here in West Virginia, but I'm telling you there's places in the world where the destruction and the misery, uh, the Ukraine and Russia fighting it out. You think there's not some misery over there and people dying and people suffering? See, there is, right? So the destruction of misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not found. See, there's wars and rumors of wars that are talked about here at the end of times. Just before the revelation of the church, then these things really start to kick in the gear, right? These things are going to happen. See, the way of peace, nobody wants to know that. If I, if I stop the peace or start the peace... Then I can't I can't sell ammunition. I can't sell guns because nobody's interested in guns and ammunition and tanks and fighter jets and all these things. You see where we're going? See, without the corruption and without all the crazy of the world, we don't need this stuff. So there is no fear of God before their eyes. Are we there yet? See, there's no fear, Stephanie Barker. There's no fear, Myrtle. There's no fear, Biff. There's no fear, David. We don't fear God. Now, I'm telling you what I did in March 1997. My fear of the Lord peaked. I knew he was going to kill me and put me in hell. And guess what I did? I surrendered and I got saved. And that's where we're at in this whole thing. That's what you've got to do. That's what I would suggest that you do. And um, and that's where we're at in this whole scheme of things. Right? So, um, there's no fear of God before their eyes. You better get the fear of the Lord in you. 
Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be shut, stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So again, what is it, all this law? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not lie, uh, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not, well, as there's the same. Don't have any other God before me. Don't make any graven image. Don't take my name in vain. Honor the Sabbath day. Honor mother and father. Right? What is the deal with all that? Those are things that when I realize, man, I've done those things, that ought to cut me to the heart. Right? And all that was is to show these are things that fall short of the standard of God. So this is the law in that you need to know and have knowledge of what sin is. It is sinful to kill somebody, to lie to somebody. It is sinful to steal from somebody, to commit adultery, to covet. All these things are sinful things. But here's where this thing happens to turn the corner is that all this sin debt is paid for by Jesus Christ on that cross. So now let's look at this. It says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So once again, the witness is that the law and the prophets talked about the coming of Jesus Christ. He's in there all the way through the Bible, from let us create heaven and earth to um, Genesis chapter 3, where sin enters into the world. Then God says, we're going to send somebody in the last days, and he is going to stomp the head of the devil. It's right there in Genesis 3. So this is not a new plan of God to send Jesus Paul is saying it's all being fulfilled from the Old Testament law, things that you should know, the difference between right and wrong, what's morally decent, and now here we are, okay? So there's, there's where we're at. So even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. See, there's no difference between... And, and the ultimate lesson, of course, I brought it into the 21st century. But the lesson here was, what's the difference between the Jewish people and the Gentiles? And the truth is, there's none of us that are any different than anybody else because we've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. And that's what Paul writes for verse 23. So being justified freely by the grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So once again, <clears throat> what are we looking at? <clears throat> a couple of doctrinal footnotes here today. And it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right? I just read that to you. So the personal sin that's in my life today is different. We're all still sinning. We all still make mistakes. But this personal sin is doing something that is prohibited by God. Okay? Which we look at lie, cheat, steal. Right? But here's the other thing. Okay? Okay? Another thing that can be a sin to me is not only doing what is prohibited, but not doing something that God has asked me to do. See? So think about that. See, there is this, a sin of omission, which is not following through with what God's requiring us to do. So us saved people, our sins may still be piling back up because we're really not doing the things God's asked us to go and do. There's where we need to really be careful with this thing. Because if we're not careful, we'll fall right back into where we were, and we don't want to go backwards. See? So sin is falling short of God's glory. So see, God has a glory for us to reach, and we want to get there. See, we're going astray like a wandering sheep in Isaiah 53, 6. We're transgressing or overstepping the law like in Psalm 51, 1 or Luke 15, 29. We're trespassing. Lead us not into trespasses. So lead us not into sin. How do we sin? We're exercising our own will versus the will of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. So sin brings hideous results. We always think, well, I'll just do this. It won't really be a big thing, right? Well, I'm married, but I'm going to talk to this woman or this man, and it's not going to be a big thing. Well, the next thing you know, I got this relationship going, and it could go just like Bathsheba and David, it could go so far that it ends up in murder. It could go so far that it ends up in lying. 
adultery, coveting. Uh, you know, I figure David broke all Ten Commandments if he looks at Bathsheba on the Sabbath day. So I got to roll out of here. There's a lot I got to do today, and I'm sure you're the same way. But we appreciate you guys being here. It's always great to start today with you. And I see the sun coming up here. Let me see if I can get you a little something. I'm in a different spot this morning. But you can see that the sun is popping up here over the over the uh, horizon. So it's good to see you, Benita, Pam, Butch, David, everybody that's on here. It's good to see you. Uh, Maureen, Tony, Biff. Uh, I don't know if that messes me up when I scan that or if you can even tell, but just trying to look through who's here. So we're glad that you are here. We look forward to meeting with you again tomorrow. We always hope that we can get here and uh, do what God wants us to do. We will continue here because there's a lot more to do in this situation. Uh, there's a lot of personal sin there. I think we covered that a little bit in that we've all sinned. So when I go to somebody and I want to talk to them about Jesus, it's really important that I realize that guess what, man? We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have to really be careful in that. So let's close this thing out. You all have a wonderful day. And we look forward to seeing you about this same time. And tomorrow I should be back at the school, at the high school, where we have a really beautiful sunrise there. Have a great day. Lord, we're thankful. <clears throat> we're thankful that you love us. We're thankful that you've allowed us or showed us in our life that we are sinners and that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that we understand and we're still humble to the fact that there's none of us that are any good. And if any of us think we are good, if any of us think we deserve something, then we're really mistaken and we really got a lot of problems in our life today. So, Lord, we want to be found doing what you want us to do. We want to be all that we can be for you. We want to go to heaven one day and be with you in this place where the sun will never go down. Isn't that amazing? The day's never going to end. No more tears, no more sorrow, and no more pain. And we cannot wait to be there with you. So, Lord, help us to recognize the sin that's in our life, even as saved people. We still fall short of your glory. We still fall short of your standards, whether it's a sin I shouldn't, I know I shouldn't do and I do it, or whether it's a sin of omission where I know I should be out doing works for you, and I'm not doing it. And I think a lot of churches today, a lot of us Christians, we're going to be found guilty of you just didn't do enough. So I hope we can get past that. Lord, we ask for you to be with the prayer list that's on each heart that's on here with us this morning. We've got unspoken prayer requests. We've got spoken prayer requests. Please be with each one that's here this morning. Bless the lives of those that take the time to support this ministry by being here and praying with us. Because you know what? Man, if we didn't have each other, what would we have? And so we're so thankful that everybody's here and we're all paying attention. And we're all getting a chance to learn a little bit more about you and what your plan for us is. So, Lord, our prayer list always has the men and women in the military at the top of the list. Our veterans that have already served us have paid tremendous prices, whether it's a PTSD, a loss of a limb, or some other issue that's going on with their health, uh, or their well-being, and their families. You know, we, we don't pray for the families of these veterans. And there's a lot goes into this thing, man. And freedom is not free, Lord. And we know <clears throat> that we need to pray for these men and women. We also, Lord, ask for you to be with our policemen, our firefighter, our first responders, these men. Um, these men uh, and women are out here on the front lines of our problems every single day. I mean, they're seeing things you can't imagine. And Lord, at the end of the day, we hope and we pray that um, we hope and pray that you'll be with them and you'll guide them and you'll keep them and protect them. Be with our school kids. Be with our school bus drivers and our teachers that are having to deal with these kids that are just out of control on so many different levels. It's I'm not laughing, Lord. I'm just, it just, wow. It's just craziness. But Lord, we have asked you to intervene in the lives of the kids, intervene in the lives of so many. Uh, like you intervened in ours. You never quit on us. You never gave up. So we're asking that same thing for the school kids and the teachers and the bus drivers were asking for that in the hospitals with the nurses and the doctors and the staffings that are out there. So there's so many things we're asking for. And Lord, we hope and pray that you'll be with and guide them in every single possible way. So again, forgive us where we fail you. And we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. 
we love you in Jesus. We appreciate you. If there's anything we can do for you, you please let us know, and we will do our very best to, uh, to help you any way that we can. Have a great Wednesday, and we look forward to being with you here in the morning. Have a great day. God bless.